you know, authors like Tim Powers, um, James Baylock, and uh, K.W. Jeter um, and were writing these things. And in a, a letter to his editor, um, Jeter said, kind of tongue in cheek, said, you know, we sh to, to, to sell this a little better, we should start calling our, calling our work steampunk, you know, to kind of play off of the popularity of cyberpunk. And apparently his editor really liked that. <laughs> and so they were like, steampunk? Fuck like, yeah. Sorry, we, we, have, we don't have children in here, I hope. Um, Oh my goodness. Sorry, I didn't see you there. My apologies. I didn't say anything. Cover your ears. Ah, I'm a bad human being. Um, anyway, rewind. So uh, his editor said, that sounds awesome. Let's make that happen. And um, so more of these kind of funky um, fantasy sci-fi things were written. And so once again, William Gibson came down off of Mount Olympus and said, I will write the definitive steampunk. <laughs> And he wrote The Difference Engine, which, for those of you who have read it, is basically like Neuromancer, except that it's all clockwork instead of cyber technology. Instead, instead of computers, you get different engines. You get you know, cogs and gears. But it's all the same kinds of thematic elements, um, because that's how William Gibson writes. Oh, well, I, I should say that this was written with, with Bruce Sterling. Um, it was a, a co-authored thing, um, which changes the flair just a little bit. Um, you also, in other works, of course, you get things like the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which take very classic Victorian heroes, um, and, 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 you know, Captain Nemo, the Invisible Man, you know, all of these, you know, uh, and, and really runs with them for high adventure. Um, the Girl Genius, for instance, which is a much more modern and phenomenal comic, for those of you who have not actually read it. Um, um, and if you haven't read it, you really need to. Um, you know, you get, all right, uh, over here. So, steampunk, for some reason, people are people are really big on defining what is and is not steampunk. So you get a lot of people who are like, oh, well, the minute you introduce the internal combustion engine, that's diesel punk. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have steam technology, that's bronze punk. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, but. Regardless of what level of technology exactly, whether it's um, steam-derived or ether, um, ether, yeah, ether, ether, yeah, ether. Um, some people pronounce it ether, but that's something different. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, and, I, and either way, it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> ah, English puns, I love it. Anyway, sorry. Um, so regardless of what technology you actually have driving things, you do have this. Um, you always have airships. I don't know why, but you always have airships. Because they're cool. C yes, because they are, in fact, cool. And in fact, that's actually one of the driving things behind steam steampunk is it's cool. <laughs> why do we have it? We don't know, but it's awesome. <laughs> um, but you get this thing of high adventure. You get this, we're discovering new world. More often, lost worlds, actually. A lot of the archaeology kinds of things of the early turn of the century. Um, why not? So you get high adventure. You get science. <laughs> you get adventure in the name of science, for the most part. Um, that why do we go out and risk our lives for knowledge? For science. I don't know. I mean, we're not going to get rich or any or rich or famous. We're already rich or famous. Um, be, you know, and while they do it, they do it with these amazing technological advances that are all clockwork. <laughs> it's all steam powered, and you're like, oh, that would never work. But it's awesome. <laughs> and so we keep doing it. So you get giant mechanical not a lie. Yeah, that's a steamboat that's also an octopus. <laughs> right, I mean, where else would you get this kind of thing? This is amazing. And it makes no sense, but it's awesome and I love it. Um, and so all the stories of steampunk tend to really focus around the, the, these gentlemen and lady adventurers, the, these high-born individuals. Um, who, for, because they're bored, because you know they're part of the, the upper elite crust and they've got too much money and they don't actually need to work, um, they go out in search of knowledge and adventure and you know you know good old fashioned two fisted you know pulpy you know adventure goodness, um, and you gotta love that, um, which is of course 180 from, from most cyberpunk works, which focus on the downtrodden. 
um, and, and the marginalized characters. Here we're, we're, we're like, you know what, we want this to be awesome. We want, we want to see, we don't want to see how the system is, you know, berating us and kicking us down. We want to be part of the awesome half of the system. Um, and so, of course, in a lot of steampunk, a lot of, despite being very Victorian influenced in its styling, and frequently it's, you know, a lot of steampunk literature is set in Victorian time frames between 1950 and about, sorry, scratch that, 1850, ooh, um, 1850 and 1910, for roughly, it, it varies. Um, and of course, you get a lot of alternate worlds and fictitious worlds entirely, but that time frame of culture and technology is about where we are. And of course, during that actual time frame in real history, we had, we did in fact, we had a lot of amazing advances. You know, technology went through the roof. Industry happened overnight. We, we developed, you know, uh, the, the, the assembly line and mass production. And we were doing all these cool things, but we also had a lot of real troubling issues as society writ large. We had, you know, um, women still couldn't vote. <laughs> For one thing, we had, you know, slavery was an institutional thing through most of that period. But steampunk literature doesn't really want to deal with any of that, because that's a downer, that's a bummer, dude, we don't want any of that. So we're going to ignore that, we're going to focus on the awesome. Um, and so, of course, in a lot of steampunk um, universes, those kinds of things just didn't happen. You know, that's not a part of the universe that a lot of steampunk stuff is set in. Um, it, and of course, then you start getting into the culture of steampunk, which is a slightly different beast. Um, and, and for those of you who don't know who Abney Park is, they're uh, a goth band who turns who said, you know what, we're tired of being a goth band, we're going to be a steampunk band now. And they, they put gears on their violins, and they became awesome. 